<laughs> I just like the color, you know. <laughs> red means that, like if you have coffee in a red mug, it makes you go faster, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not a coffee here. It's just the water, really. <laughs> really? It's not the water. <laughs> You know, it's after hours. It doesn't have to be just water anymore. Yeah, you can have a beer. Yeah, I, ju I just, I just call it water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's welcome everyone water. to the Alt.net group. We oh, are... sorry, we're going. Thanks, James. <laughs> yeah, just letting you know you're live. <laughs> we have, we have Lord Teaspoon claiming first post. And, no, uh, it's not a JetBrains license. Jeez. No, you have to answer the really clever and tricky questions to get a JetBrains license. You can't just you get. Can't, you can't just provide an answer without a question. Yeah, I mean the answer could be first. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jeopardy. <laughs> All right. So um, now this is where we just kind of stare at the the screen. Well, right? We wait and decide. Can we do an intro? Should we not do an uh, intro? We should. I think, I think we've got enough people to do an intro now. We should roll. Oh, all right. All right. Let's do it. Right. You you doing it? Go for it. Go for it. I'm doing it. You're doing it. You're in charge. No, you're doing it. No, okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Can I do it? Oh, do Alex. Oh, Alex, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get started. <laughs> No, you go. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, welcome everyone to Sydney Alt.net, the usual chaotic meetup that it is at the start. Um, so this particular one today, um, and thank you, ASDF Monkey. Um, I am feeling better, as you can tell. I'm actually talking this week um, versus last month, which was unpleasant. Um, but uh, yeah, so this week, um, this week, this month, I'm good at calendars. A skill. Um, we're talking Angular for something different. This is the alt part of alt.net. Uh, and apparently, I'm going to try and give Alexi, who's there, a hard time um, and tell him how React and Vue are much better. And he's going to hit back and we're just going to argue. It's going to be like a little purse fight. It'll be lots of fun. Um, and James is going to sit there and try and keep us separated or something. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sure. keep us so That's what I'm going to do. You're going to keep us on track. Uh, um, so, yeah. Give you some licenses, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Get those licenses out. Maybe, what maybe. He's already into it. He wants his 19th license. Um, <laughs> There but are um, more seriously, it is a chance uh, to cover some of the things that are happening in Angular land of late, um, seeing how it's different from uh, what it used to be. Uh, and Alexia will run through all of that and we'll have a bit of fun with it. Um, as always, if you're in chat and you're watching, we love the questions, we love the heckling, we love the, the interruptions. Drop in the things, hit the keyboard, put in safe for work kind of comments um, or reasonably safe for work. Uh, so James can actually publish them on the stream. Um, and we shall go from there, which will be great. Um, we should probably start off uh, just before we jump uh, across to Alexi as well with a few quick things community-wise that have been happening. Um, probably the big one, if you aren't paying attention, is that the build conference is on starting tomorrow. Um, given it's a virtual conference, you can still register and do all that sort of thing, probably up until the conference is finished, um, <laughs> and catch all the sessions and see what's coming up. Um, there appears to be, uh, I was just having a quick look, uh, a number of big themes that are coming up um, in terms of overall what they're looking at. Um, but generally, it's developer tooling. You know, we expect there's going to be a fair bit talked about with VS22 on the way, uh, the 64-bit version finally that everyone's going, Yay, 64 bits, all the memory. Um, and VS Code, obviously some Azure side of things, um, developer velocity, we're expecting a bit more on Maui that we covered a little bit recently. James and I were talking beforehand, um, just going, all the things they're covering are, are things we've already covered at all on that. Yeah, so if you've been here for any of the months, you know, we've actually set the agenda for build. We didn't realize it. Uh, so we're taking all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah, the only we, thing we haven't really covered is static web apps, you know, the static web hosting side of things. But um, yeah, so cloud native containers, things like that, as you would expect. Um, Maui, WinUI, we covered some of that recently as well. Um, all things IoT will come up, uh, we're expecting too. Um, and personally, I'm hoping to see something about GitHub code spaces come out. I'm itching for that thing to be available. Just waiting um, for some access. So. If anyone give me access, I've been applied to the beta for 
months. Uh, what, what GitHub code space is what that? Oh, oh. So okay. So for those who don't know, nice, nicely done by the way. This is how this interviewee thing works. Um, you ask questions and someone makes up an answer. Um, <laughs> so yeah. VS Code is part of the remote development thing. Um, ended up with this point where you could do remote development in containers, and you've got this dot dev uh, dev container setting approach. That's been extended now so that Code Spaces runs a container and uh, in the cloud um, for your dev environment, a little bit like uh, Git Pod, Git Pod does, um, where you're running a container in the cloud, you're doing all your development with your local machines, and you use the dev container to pre configure the environment. So, new developer turns up. In your team, you go, hey, don't worry about setting your machine up and spending a week setting your machine up, which is always the best way to do nothing when you start. Um, literally go, here's your container image, deploy in your environment, you're good to go. Happy days, go develop. Um, and it also means that things like testing environments, you can pass a machine around as a test environment for someone else to jump on and use. You can pass out the pass the environment around as a pull request and go, here's the PR code, here's where it's already merged, here's where it's running. Go have a look. You don't have to do anything else. So there's a lot in there around um, containers um, and that remote environment, which is really interesting. Um, of note, some of that also then leads into things like secure environments for companies who are worried about developers doing code on their own machines. They can do a connection into a dev container on their machine, but not actually get the code locally, do all their all their things and still interact with it and have a good experience. So it's Kind of interesting. Um, if you go to github.com slash code spaces, uh, it'll give you a bit of a, a run through as well, but that'd be really nice. Um, is like there a Dan. question on that at the end, James, by the way? Same question that he wants a GitHub code spaces invite as well. So if I get one, I'll make sure um, that I don't give it to you because it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it'll be like an invite a friend thing. And I don't have one because I have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, we have jet brain licenses to give away. <laughs> yeah, leave Richard to cry in the corner by himself. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we've got the usual thing: two questions at the end. If you get the first right answer for each one, you get any of the jet brains products. So we'll do that. Oh, did anyone go to that um, conference, by the way, the JetBrains one? Chuck it in uh, in chat if you did. Otherwise, all right, maybe we should get started. Chat. I'll swap no. over. No, no news there. All right, time. Alexi, you ready? Hello, everyone. All right. I'll put you over to slides. Uh-huh. Awesome. I'll put you at the top because you are the most important one. There you go. I'm more important than Richard, though. Yeah, so I, that way when James put... The good part about being in that bottom corner down there is that whenever James puts a question up on the screen, I get cut off. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Alex, you get started. Leave us to... Leave us... We'll, we'll stop. <laughs> All right, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alexey Kuncevich, and today I will talk about Angular. As you see, uh, the title for this talk is quite uh, long, and the reason why it's so long <laughs> because Richard suggested this title. <laughs> <laughs> I could have made it longer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he could have made it longer, but I've done my work, um, and I use this title shortening service. Uh, it's coming soon in Microsoft <laughs> Azure. It might be in a couple of years. And so I come up with this one. <laughs> this is Angular. <laughs> I said it. In. Yeah, I see so, what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, done a lot of work to actually make it yeah. happen, as you can tell. <laughs> so, right. Today I talked to you about a uh, quick Angular introduction, uh, Angular ecosystem, uh, new features and etc. But before we get to that, let me introduce myself. 
Uh, I'm Alexey Kuncevich. I am Google Developer Expert, Mentor, and Consultant. You might see me talking around different uh, meetups. Actually, it's, I think it's my second time talking at Alt.net for my memory. I've done it probably about uh, two years ago or something, but I cannot remember what, what I was talking about. Probably it was something Angular related, that's for sure. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, I'm also involved a lot in the community, like speaking and organizing different sort of events. Mostly it's Angular related. Um, I'm also teaching, running the workshops, uh, involved into open source, um, into this particular project. It's called NGXS. Uh, it's like, a, if you cannot, if you want, you can ask a question later. What does it mean, NGXS, and uh, and give you an, an answer? <laughs> How much later do I ask that question? Like now? Um, what is okay. NGXS? <laughs> All right, <laughs> easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> NGXS stands for Angular State Management. It's kind of shortening, right? NGX. It's it's kind of ng. ng okay, let's start from ng. <laughs> ng. <laughs> it means Angular, like a short. Right. Good right? start. X, it means any version, any number. Mm -hmm. Started from two, actually, not from okay, one. Okay, so not any number, any number other than one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And I tell you why in a bit. And S, it's, it's basically st state. NGX, NGX, Angular, and S state for state, Angular state, oh. right? <laughs> so yeah, it's one of the solutions uh, to manage uh, to to manage uh, state in Angular applications, it's a really cool one actually. And also, I'm a host of Angular Rocks podcast, which I'm really excited about. Actually, tomorrow I'm releasing a, an episode with Angular creator with Mish Mishka Hevery. So, if you want to listen to this one, check uh, check out the this one in twenty five in twenty three hours and fifty <laughs> minutes something. <Whoa. laughs> Who's <laughs> so yeah, and also I created this thing called frontendforge.com. Uh, we can look at up uh, later together, and if we want a deeper discussion about comparison of uh, frontend frameworks. Is this just so you're giving yourself ammunition for later on? Is that what's happening? Uh, <laughs> not uh, later on. We can talk anytime. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I prepared, you know, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> right. So let's get into it. And with the first thing, what I want to talk to you guys, uh, there is actually two different frameworks, um, Angular and AngularJS. And so AngularJS, it's anything Angular version one. So that's how community decided to about a naming convention and when angular was released version 2 some people started to call it angular 2 but later on community decided hey let's just stick with angular uh, let's let's just call an angular everything which angular version 2 plus and let's call angular 1 angular js and so then that's the convention and that's just letting you know about that I, I believe many people. And no one talks about this. Angular JS anymore, right? It's yeah, exactly. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, and all bad things you can think of uh, when you talk in Angular, like lots of people might say, "Oh, like to way that are binding," or like, "Oh, it's Angular is slow." Actually, it's not about Angular; it's about Angular JS, <laughs> because Ang the modern Angular is is fast, and and the way that to way that are binding, what's that? It is there. Yes, it's there, but you, it's it's kind of uh, you need to switch it on if you want. So yeah, but uh, most of people not using this uh, this way that are binding these days. Only in some age cases, mostly mm -hmm. like when you're dealing with the forms, for example. So yeah, there is different other techniques which replacing uh, which works better than two way that are binding. Mostly, it's related. With RxJS, ooh, it's like very big topic. <laughs> RxJS, we will touch it a little bit later today. And also, there is one thing I want to. The last thing I want to mention about AngularJS, that uh, long, LTS, which stands for long term long term support, will be end by the end of this year. So if, if anyone of uh, who joined today uh, meetup, or if you guys know anyone who not joined today meetup, but they run in AngularJS, which means Angular version one. So uh, like 
point them out that by the end of this year, the LTS supports end, and so they might need to consider to migrate. Should they choose, migrate to Angular, Vue, or React? I don't know. But yeah, they need to make an, a call on that. Or well, they could sure. migrate companies as well or something like that. <laughs> you mean like <laughs> leave it to someone else, right? <laughs> Who wants to deal with AngularJS? <laughs> OK. So what Angular is well known for? So I mean, Angular 2 plus, right? And there is a couple of things there. As a comprehensive feature set, so there are lots of things under the Angular umbrella, which Angular team uh, ship. There is, I will touch all these things today, but yeah, there is lots of things. Angular is not just about view layer, like React, right? There is lots of other things, router, forms, HTTP client, you know, all of these things there, which you don't have to think about when you start in Angular project. You just install this library and you're good to go. So it has excellent tooling, which I also give a little bit more details today. Uh, the Angular ecosystem is so huge and so advanced. There's a lot of packages there. I will let I will tell about some of those packages, which you might consider when you um, build an Angular applications. Stability and support. It's all mostly. I mean. There is a team uh, in Google. It's more than 10 people, I think. They're working there, making sure that Angular is stable and well-supported. And another part of uh, stability is sub uh, of support is a community, which I mentioned as well today, later on. So Angular community is just awesome. Um, yep. So what Angular actually offers? So component-based architecture is kind of modern uh, days architecture. Uh, React and Vue and other front-end frameworks are using the same similar approach. Uh, dependency injection, it's for citizen in Angular. It helps to write uh, testable and better quality and maintainable code. Um, it has powerful rendering engine, which actually translates in your code into something that browser browsers understand. Uh, reactivity powered by RxJS. So RxJS is uh, Rx, uh, reactive extensions library, or in other words, reactive extensions yeah. for uh, for JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, implementations of reactive of reactive in extension exist for many other languages. Um, so TypeScript there as a first class yeah. citizen. Um, Angular has predictable release cycles. I give you more details on that later on today. And yeah, developer predictivity is so awesome. You can't believe there's many things there, including CLI, language service, and the dev tools. I, I also have a couple of slides which I'm cover these details as well later on. And yeah, there is lots of best practices and receipts uh, on official uh, angular.io website if you want to check it out as well. So the facts, um, Angular has, Angular.io, which is official guideline, uh, have uh, a little bit less than 2 million hits per month, uh, 11 million uh, NPM downloads over the month, uh, 200,000 answers on Stack Overflow. So if you have any questions, you always can go there and ask a question, or most of the time the answer is there because someone probably deal with exactly the same problem you did in, so you just, just just search for that. And uh, as I said before, like, uh, the Angular community is just awesome, and that's why there are so many meetups in in such many different cities around the, globes, uh, around the globe. And those meetups are quite active. Some of them running monthly, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So, component-based architecture. It means uh, the major building block of your application represented by a component. And while you build in your components, you build up a tree of components. So that's the representation of your application. It's a tree of components. That's how Angular component looks like. So it has a selector, template URL with your HTML template, style URL with your H uh, CSS or it supports CSS, uh, SAS, and less. So you can pick anything of, from this list, what you prefer. Um, if you don't like to keep your um, 
concerns in separate files, you're free to go to keep everything in a single file. I think it's most of um, React devs and Vue devs uh, like to approach this way. So yeah, you can do that um, in Angular as well. I prefer actually as a first uh, uh, to keep everything in a single file. Uh, so how Angular works, just in, just in a few words. So the Vue engine, which is a compiler, is taking your templates and TypeScript class and producing this weird kind of um, <laughs> ab abracadabra. <laughs> so then this abracadabra became a part of your bundle. There is uh, index.html, the entry point of your application, and it has like a bunch of JavaScript files um, referenced as well as a CSS file. It's all minified, it's all like, it's all only understandable by browser. So if you open one of those JS files, you just be surprised that you won't understand anything there, but because it's all minified and it's basically like something which browser understands best and something which works in the browser um, quite well. So yeah, there is there is lots of com com complexity in the build process, but guess what? You don't have to be you don't have to deal with all of that. You don't have to set up the TypeScript uh, compilation uh, or config, web con con webpack config. You don't have to set up uh, true shake, and you don't have to do all that because uh, it's all taken care for you by Angular CLI. <laughs> and being an Angular developer, really, in some cases, you're just feeling like a Superman. <laughs> you just write in you just write in your code, your awesome code, and everything is, is taken care of for you by tooling and ecosystem and Glacilla, yeah. I get the feeling you might be overselling it just a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm just being, I'm just being honest. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> you sure they're not bugs coming at you. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> yeah, you see, bugs is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you have to deal with the bugs, yes. <laughs> and I have a, a surprise slide for that in the next 10 minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Angular 12 is here, and it was just released recently this month. And I'm really excited about that. There's lots of cool things within Angular 12. So now uh, SAS uh, support getting... Now SAS support support uh, landed in a single component files because before it wasn't been it just didn't work so if we wanted to deal with sas you had to use uh, you had to use a separate file and so probably if you prefer everything in a single file you was a little bit kind of sad <laughs> maybe so you didn't feel like a superman right <laughs> but now <laughs> with the sas support in a single file yeah you get this feeling <laughs> Then critical uh, CSS and uh, fonts in line. It's helping a little bit in the performance, like a first boot of your uh, of a like when Angular, Angular boots in the browser. The first page is the first contentful. It's helping the first contentful paint. So mm -hmm. it gives users to this um, like um, opportunity to start interact with application. Maybe start reading or thinking. Oh, where, uh, where I want to click right now, right before even the rest of Angular loaded in the browser. And the bigger your application, the more uh, things needs to be loaded. And so this critical CSS and fonts inlining helps a lot for this use case. So TypeScript, TypeScript strict mode by default, it means now uh, it's, a, it's a more strictest mode available for TypeScript. So it means you're making less errors, right? As there is better type checking across your templates, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So it's helpful. Uh, then Tailwind native support for those who don't know Tailwind. It's a, such a library which which is very very popular across uh, front end developers, uh, uh, Vue dev develop Vue.js developers using Tailwind, React developers using Tile, and guess what? Angular developers also love to use Tailwind. But before, you had to do a little bit of like you know setup manual setup to make it uh, work. But uh, with the Angular 12 and with the CLI, Angular CLI 12 release, now Tailwind get, uh, get native support, which is cool. 
uh, Webpack 5 production support landed mm -hmm. with uh, V12. Uh, it was uh, there in uh, version 11, but it was under, under a flag. So if you wanted to use Webpack 5, you had to opt it in manually by switching the flag. But in version 12, it's actually production ready, which is pretty cool. So it opens a lot of use cases like uh, this mod module refrigeration, Webpack uh, module refrigeration, which works uh, well on a big scale. Uh, AE 11 deprecation. So we have for those of you who are still <laughs> using AE 11. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every framework's favorite feature. <laughs> it's finally getting deprecated, and I think Microsoft. Uh, I, was there a, an announcement recently about IE eleven deprecation as well yeah, from Microsoft? Yeah, and everything they're doing from now on, they're just ignoring IE eleven. It's it's dead. Yep. Yes. So. Yeah, it means we have to ship less uh, code uh, within our applications, right? We, we don't have to ship all these additional, we, we don't have to include mm -hmm. in our bundles all this additional code to fix IE11, yeah. which is good. So standardized errors. And now if you get in an error uh, in a console, you just, it's appeared with a URL. So you will see a URL there. And by clicking this URL, you end up in a specific page which related to this error. And the information on this page will tell you how to fix this error. It might be just uh, uh, some example, like uh, maybe code example, or maybe just a video you can watch for a minute and just realize, understand the error and just fix it. So it's pretty handy. Angular DevTools was being announced uh, actually last week. Um, I'll tell you, I'll give you more details on DevTools, but yeah, it's kind of uh, just revealing, <laughs> just to get you a little bit excited about upcoming slides. It's a very cool addition to um, to all this tool set, uh, to Angular developer tool set, which makes you feel even more superhero. <laughs> <laughs> and so the feature request process became more kind of standardized as a way uh, VS Code feature request working. So they basically they take the same process and they decided to apply the same process uh, for Angular, so which is good. All right, and um, there is uh, this URL, uh, um, angular.io guy slash guy slash roadmap, uh, if you want to get more details about what what was coming in angular 12 and what's actually in the roadmap uh, on if for a future angular releases you can check up this uh, url so let's talk about angular ecosystem uh, as i mentioned before angular ecosystem is quite big and there is uh, i separated in the two parts so first part is something which take care by angular team um at Angular slash, uh, sorry, uh, at, at Angular and um, how you call this symbol? Uh, asterisk. Asterisk. Oh, the slash. The slash. The slash. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, so I said it right. I said it correct. Yeah. Oh, well, you can say forward slash backslash slash uh -huh. slash, right. slash. Exactly. Slash. It's exactly what I meant. Whack, whack. <laughs> so that's an organization on NPM, and everything under this organization, there is couple, uh, there's multiple packages uh, listed. So it's everything which is taken care of by. Um, Angular team and community helping to take care about uh, these packages as well by raising issues or suggesting features, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, uh, there is more things which community is taking care of. So first of all, it's um, okay. Yeah, let me just uh, let me just uh, tell you a little bit more details about Angular platform, and then we move to community. So the Angular platform. That's how many things is there. I want to highlight a couple uh, forms, uh, router, CDK, which stands for, yeah. <laughs> it's Google Slides, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> it's not an Angular animation. Unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't build this presentation with Angular. However, I know there is Angular, uh, there is, was it? I know someone, he is a React developer and he's building his uh, slides with React. So yeah, sorry, I not build. I didn't build my slides with uh, Angular. Hello, I built my personal uh, website with Angular, which is in the left uh, bottom corner. Concevich.dev is built with Angular. 
yeah. So I'm trying to use Angular as much as possible, <laughs> but not for slides yet. <laughs> so the universal, uh, it's kind of another way of uh, isomorphic, to say in isomorphic, right? So it's, um, it's a uh, package which helps you to uh, make your uh, Angular application rendered on a server side, which helps to improve CO, you know, and performance, like because uh, there is less things happening in the browser. Uh, the server just gives you a HTML page, which is cool. So uh, internalization is there out of the box. You just grab the package and apply internalization for your application. HTTP client is there. So you don't have to go and look for what is a what is the most popular HTTP client today? <laughs> you just take HTTP client and go with that. Angular material um, is kind of uh, a set of components uh, available for Angular, built by Angular material team. You can just grab them and go and build your application. Yeah, it, it, it probably, Angular material probably won't work for everyone because um, as you know, uh, okay, for someone who don't know, uh, Material is a kind of design language built by Google, and it has a specific boundaries. So if your project um, doesn't fit, this, if these boundaries doesn't fit your project, you probably want to choose something else. And I give you some options soon. And Angular CLI, which is kind of uh, helps you to, um, to scaffold, to uh, produce a produ production build, dev build, you know, to serve your application in dev mode, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have a dedicated slide for that, which I show you later on. So I really love Angular CLI. It's uh, one of the best um, things I ever experienced being Angular develop uh, being a developer for 15 years. The Angular CLI is the most compre comprehensive tool I ever deal with, really. So the community, they uh, built a style guide. It's a set of patterns which uh, people, these Angular developers follow. And it means that most of the Angular applications is kind of following the same, um, the same approach. And if you open, if you build applica your application and give it a hand to other Angular developer, he can become productive from day one because uh, uh, it's all, you know, every Angular application pretty much the same, following similar structure, similar, like, we, the way we hand, uh, handling components and uh, independent injection, you know, all these code blocks is uh, all looking pretty much the same in every project. And that's why uh, it's very easy to get product. If, if you know Angular, if you don't know Angular, you might need to, to take a little bit of time learning it. And learning curve is probably quite higher than React and maybe even Vue.js. But once you're there, you can be really, really productive. So libraries, there are lots of libraries available for Angular. Uh, it's very well-maintained libraries. Um, so you don't have to invent the wheels. Most of the cases you just in most of the cases you just grab a library and pm install it and you're ready to go. And so yeah, tooling is is very very comprehensive as well. So speaking about UI components and library, as I tell, uh, Angular Material may won't work for every case for every project. So you can choose from this is a minimum list. There is actually more <laughs> if you Google. But yeah, you can pick a Bootstrap, PrimeNG, Clarity, and et cetera, et cetera. There is lots of options. One, one question from, uh, uh -huh. from Andrew. Hang on, I'll bring it up. So are the standard web components natively supported by Angular, or any adapters are required? Mm -hmm. OK, it's a good question. Actually, uh, when uh, Angular team decided on components-based approach, so they pick, uh, they were considering actually to make web components as a uh, first class citizen, <clears throat> but it didn't, but uh, it was in a design process maybe five years ago, right? But yeah, so it didn't happen. They come up with their own custom uh, component solution, which works well. And if you want web comp if you want to embrace web components, there is, there is, there is a way to, to deal with web components in Angular. So they, there is a solution there. Yes. So currently it's, it's, um, if there is a package, it's called uh, Angular Elements. You can look up into that. And yeah, it, 
it's kind of opening a doors to web components. Oh, and also cool. there is a custom and there is a, there is a custom package. I can't remember the exact name. Uh, Angular elements or Angular web components, something like that. So it's like a, a library which builds on which built on top Angular elements, which gives you even more power over that. So I hope it answering the question. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the state management. There is lot of lots of uh, libraries built for state management. Uh, my favorite is you already know is NGXS, <laughs> <laughs> but there is what lots. a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, if some people just join this stream, yeah, I already mentioned in the beginning that NGXS is, is, is actually I'm uh, involved in NGXS a little bit. Right, RxJS is uh, also uh, the way the TypeScript is a first class citizen in Angular. RxJS is a, also first class citizen in Angular. So you need to know a little bit of RxJS to like work with uh, HTTP client and then with the forms. And there are some other aspects of Angular uh, which based on RxJS. Sorry, let me just drink a little. Yeah, it's uh, even when you scaffold a new uh, project with Angular, you will see if you open npm package, you will see a, there is a reference uh, to RxJS. So it's a core bit. Right. Uh, Angular re release cycles. Uh, that's something which uh, Angular team try to be as consistent as possible. Uh, the plan here is to ship a major version every six months. Um, and uh, provide then within this within the next six months to provide as active support uh, over this version, right? And then within next 12 months to provide the long-term support. And during this uh, period, you just get uh, like patches, uh, bug fixes, but you won't get the features. So it means sometimes during these 12 months, you might consider to upgrade. And you might, and people who uh, didn't follow Angular for quite a while, they might just think, oh, how would they keep up with migration? <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, um, I also would have this question <laughs> if I was a new to Angular, but uh, guess what? The, uh, the Angular team uh, are taking care about, about these uh, upgrades. And if you want to upgrade, you just use this magic ng upgrade command, which do the most of the work for you. So packages uh, will be just migrated. We're talking about maybe like some replacing the imports or maybe the API changed, which not happening quite often. It's very rare when there is a API change, but if there is a change, Angular team is taking care for you. So you're kind of safe on this side. So what happens with um, third party packages that depend on Angular versions? Mm -hmm. So RxJS uh, gets uh, these migrations as well. Uh, if we're talking about other third-party packages, uh, yeah, it depends on the uh, author of the package. So if author of the package is taking care about the users, he might provide um, this thing called schematics. So it's mm -hmm. a part of a library which uh, dedicated for migrations, which taking care of migrations. But uh, at least there is like a migration guide uh, if you know, open source is all uh, work. You know how open source works, <laughs> right? <laughs> so just a side note here, everything which uh, taken care by Angular team. So you should be, you 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 cover it on migrations for 100%. But if you rely on third party package, yeah. then yeah, it's up to uh, author of the package mm. to provide the schematics or not, yeah. And also there is an upgrade guide which is available on this URL. So it kind of, if you put what version you want to migrate to, from what version you want to migrate to, from version to version. So you mm -hmm. just choose uh, from the drop down. Uh, it can, it will give you some hints uh, how to migrate. But most of the time, it, dep yeah, it depends on the size of the application, right? But if it's like small application, you just run in upgrade, update, but if it's a complex application, if you rely on maybe some APIs, 
which was maybe deprecated. I don't know. But if it's deprecated, actually, NG upgrade should solve it as well. But anyway, just uh, a side note, always check this guide when you migrate. So maybe you get some clues as well. Uh, speaking about tooling, so as I uh, uh, initially stated that Ang Angular tooling is very, very comprehensive. And so Angular Dev Tools was just recently released. Uh, it's a Chrome extension, which you install and... It, Were there uh, no dev tools previously? Uh, sorry, once again? Weren't there dev tools previously? Yeah, it was it was been able to play with uh, to debug your Angular application in Dev Tools started from Angular uh, nine. Mm -hmm. They have this API which available in Dev mode. So if you open console and type ng, uh, you will get access to uh, your application tree, and so you can play around. With the application, you can debug application, apply change detection. But it wasn't an Angular tab or anything in the dev but, tools. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind okay. of they go in one uh, step forward and give you this uh, nice UI. I'm not sure if it's based on this the same API. Probably partly it is, but I'm not sure. But yeah, it's as you can see, there is even is, there is really big st step forward. I'd say it's a jump forward <laughs> because also uh, they include in the profiler. So you mm -hmm. can run a profiler, yeah. you can see the change detection cycles, and you can very easily debug uh, and code the bugs uh, using uh, Angular Dev tools. tools. It's very powerful. They just release it. It means it's it's kind of, you can call it MVP, right? But they planning to add more features. Yeah, going okay, forward. So catching up to React and Vue. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Yeah, I'm not much familiar with uh, React and Vue uh, Dev Tools, but uh, yeah, I guess I guess they want to catch up with with that. Yeah, that makes sense, right? You want? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, is like if uh, framework doesn't have dedicated Dev Tools, yeah, it's not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I agree. Whereas then also there is a thing called. Um, Angular language service, which available as um, extension, mm -hmm. VS Code extension. But mm -hmm. if you're not using VS Code, I think, I believe um, WebStorm also leveraging this language service within uh, WebStorm. So it gives you, um, as you can see on this GIF, so it gives you auto complete on templates. Uh, I believe, I don't know, guys, uh, uh, React and Vue. The, yeah, they've got language like that. They have this as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Nice. So yeah, in Angular, it's available as a language service. So yeah, I, I'm not sure how how does it work in React and Vue.js. Do you need to install anything in in uh, VS Code? Or... Yeah, it's still an extension that goes in. Uh -huh. So Same you, for example, Vita V A T U R is the tool. Mm -hmm. um, React one can't. Uh, it's just off the top of my head. Someone shout out in chat. I'm having a mental blank. Um, okay. But there's other language services around as well that like, and the tools run on top of those language services. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I um, see, I see. Yeah, nice. Yeah, right. So, and another thing uh, in a Angular developer tool toolbox which is available there is Angular CLI, and it's very comprehensive. So it has. Uh, scaffolding commands built in. So if you want to scaffold a service or component or anything, class, uh, there's the whole list. I can't name the whole list. You can just use uh, available commands. Also, some NPM packages, some, uh, some Angular uh, NPM packages, they support this command called ng add. So each ng add is kind of nice addition to NPM install. So it's, it's run, uh, it runs uh, npm install for you. And then uh, if there is a schematic available, uh, ng add run this schematic. And, uh, you know, you don't have to uh, do all this library setup. You know, like some libraries, in order to consume some libraries, you have to put this code here and that code there and config file here, you know, all the things. But ng add uh, solves this problem for you, but it only works for packages which has this specific schematic. 
Uh, right, so you can run unit test and end-to-end -end test. We see lights already configured for you there, so you don't have to spend your time. Uh, LinkedIn uh, is built in as well. Codalizer is a tool built, in, built on top of LinkedIn, so it gives you like this nice uh, set of rules uh, for uh, Angular-specific set of rules. Uh, so as I already mentioned in the beginning, TypeScript is a first-class citizen, and the transpilation process I already said for you, <clears throat> all configuration is there, and I have to deal with that at all. You just run <clears throat> your uh, ng-surf, and it just works. Uh, compiling relation less SAS is also all there set up for you. You don't have to spend any time figuring this out. Uh, yeah, but def and prod build um, is there. Uh, code splitting using Webpack. So if you want to set up a code split, you don't have to deal with that to run write any little <laughs> fiddle around with a web cap, web pack config. You don't have to do that. It's all handled for you automatically. You just in a code, you just uh, when you set up your routing in Angular. Um, <clears throat> so it's is the way you set up your route in the build process, figuring out what's actually a loosely loaded route, and it's uh, extracted this route and all the code which um, related to this route into this specific bundle, which loads uh, lazily in the browser. So tree shaking, minification, it's also all set up for you. You don't have to think about that. It's all there uh, during running uh, ng build. Uh, during running the production build, it's all too shaked and minified. And mana repo support is there as well, it means you can uh, build a leap using Angular CLI. Or, uh, so there is two types of projects you can uh, uh, scaffold with Angular CLI leap type of project and app type of project. Or you can have a monorepo. So in this monorepo, you, mono you might have a number of apps and a number of leaps. So it depends on, the, on your exact use case. And so, yeah, um, that means you might have a trees <laughs> of components and multiple teams probably working, one team working on application one and two and another team working on application two and three. It means that you can share the code across these teams and it makes sense for in enterprise environments a lot where people sharing code. Uh, same way as you guys uh, sharing code in .NET, right? You have this library. You can reference this library across different projects. So same idea applies here as well, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so yeah, that's typical enterprise solution, multiple apps, multiple leaps. So um, yeah. If you want to learn more about front-end frameworks, you can watch, you can check up with the frontendwatch.com. The site I built, it's like a dashboard uh, which comparing different uh, modern front-end frameworks um, by different metrics. There's Angular Rocks uh, podcast, which I host. And tomorrow I release a cool episode with the uh, Angular creator. So you might want to listen to it. Um, if you want to learn even more about Angular, you can subscribe for my mailing list. And if you want to learn even more, like if you want to become an Angular developer, I'm running soon a set of uh, workshops. So check, uh, stay tuned on that. <laughs> and yeah, we're getting to the end, I guess. If you have any questions, I'm happy to discuss anything I present today. Thank you. That's all. Very good, very good. So if I'm, uh, it's a new question while people are starting to, oh, there we yeah. go, there's a few coming in. All right, let's jump to those. Uh -huh. All right, we've got one from ASDF Monkey. So when I last used Angular, I found the build bundles were massive. Is that still an issue? So I don't know where, what version you was using, uh, but uh, uh, the, the team, the Angular team working on bundle signs like consistently and they improving it from version to version and starting from Angular 9, they changed the view engine. So they, they wrote a new engine and this view engine uh, have a better, uh, so using this view engine, the tree shaking, it's possible to, to shake uh, more code 
from your bundles. So it means the size of application is became smaller. So yeah, I think if you were using uh, Angular before version nine, you might have this problem if you didn't, I mean, always uh, there is uh, uh, code splitting there, so you can always leverage uh, code splitting, right? But uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, the long story short, starting from Angular 9, the um, the bundle size was reduced significantly. Uh, we've yeah. got a follow up as well. What's your typical bundle size in your prod project? That's a piece of string, that one, isn't it? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's a good question. I have to check. I can't remember when I checked last time. It means I didn't have issues, right? So <laughs> I was, uh, okay, let me tell you a story. Uh, probably uh, around version three, oh, sorry, version three didn't happen. So <laughs> around version <laughs> four, yeah, they jump from two to four. But anyway, <laughs> I don't want so to Microsoft numbering the... convention, good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to get into much details of that. <laughs> that was a reason, but anyway. <laughs> so around version four or five, yeah, I was having some issues with bundling. Is the reason was because some libraries, especially third party libraries, they wasn't it wasn't actually a problem with Angular code. It was a problem with third-party code. Like, um, what was there? Um, the Lodash, uh, RegJS uh, library, and something else was giving a good, <laughs> huge amount of payload to bundles, right? So again, it wasn't something to do with Angular. And then um, and some other libraries, you know, they didn't take care of that, but then, um, uh, Lodash released Lodash slash ECMAScript or something right like yeah, that. The version, the, the, the tree shakeable version. Yeah. Then the RegJS done some work. Then make so they now the RegJS is very properly tree shakeable. You know, so it not it wasn't actually back in the days. It wasn't even before Angular nine. It wasn't like problem with Angular as a bundle size. It was uh, sometimes it was a problem with third party libraries or Moment JS for example. Right, so yeah. Uh, and, but yeah. however, community evolved as Angular evolved. In, and so now um, every library in the ecosystem, uh, it is properly shakeable. So yeah. But yeah, as, asking the question, what is my bundle size? I don't know. I have to check. <laughs> I don't have an answer. It means I don't have a problems with, with, with this performance, <laughs> yeah. right? When I was, uh, if, if you ask me this question, like, four years ago, right? When I was, uh, during, uh, when I was, having bad days with bundles and inspecting my bundle size, I would give you this answer. But now I don't have any issues, so I don't know the answer. <laughs> fair, fair enough. All right. I think I'll go to Andrew now. So he's given <laughs> you some praise here. Very useful and informative intro. Thanks a lot. I like and then a question that will take the minutes to read. Time here, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, let's read this. <laughs> Wait, I still got cut off by the question. The girl, <laughs> it's only Alexi who's really there at the top. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. So you dealing with electron, uh, very much loved by everyone. Da -da -da but you can... you'll find that. Do, uh, do, do you guys have a question shorter now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just recording links, but. Uh, I often yeah. find um, Teams in general tends to use a fair bit more memory because it's doing video processing quite regularly. And, right. and it tends to try and keep state with all the the tabs that you can switch between in terms of chats and Teams groups and everything else. And it's trying to keep a whole lot of state um, in memory. So it's not really a uh, as much a JavaScript thing, but definitely more a uh, how the app's designed to keep track of caching and everything else that's putting in memory, I think you'll find. Yeah, sometimes it's not about a uh, uh, language you're using or framework, like sometimes it's about how you, like, how you, like, about an abstraction, what sort of abstraction you're trying to build, yeah. and maybe building this particular abstraction actually it's not the best way to use this particular language or framework. You maybe you need to tune your abstraction or maybe use some other patterns, I don't know. But yeah, most of the time yeah, it's the yeah. framework. Uh, it'd be interesting to try and throw the dev tools on it and see what it's actually keeping track of in memory. Um, conversation threads, all sorts of things. It's, it definitely is a memory hog though. Yeah, memory is actually the most painful issue, right? Yeah. To, to trace, yeah. 
Ah, uh, if if you have still time, I can oh, show oh, you the, oh, the front end watch if you want. How about that? Uh, I think we. I think James needs to get ready for questions. Ah, okay. Hey, well, good. Knock okay. out JS. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I remember knockout. <laughs> it's been a while since I last used it. <laughs> it's still in the Azure portal. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Have you considered changing over to use Hotwire? Hot layer? Hotwire HTML over the wire. It's the latest one from uh, from oh. the Actually, Where I have never. The JavaScript. I have never heard of it. <laughs> oh, really? that, so that basically means server-side rendering, right? Uh, a lot of it's server-side rendered. Yeah. yeah, it's got and it's got streaming it to the browser. Yeah, oh, is it's it got components and things, but they're oh. rendered server-side and fish oh. Yeah, I'm I'm really finding the uh, that whole server-side rendering thing very amusing these days. So like we're back to <laughs> back to web forms almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I spin that kind of thing, right? Yeah, you, generate it all on the server and then yeah, send it. Yeah, exactly. I also I also noticed that if you try start to transfer in the state, yeah. So it's exactly <laughs> I spin that. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, these patterns they never go. I mean uh, see, I remember these days when people complained about ASP.NET state, right? Uh, and now since Seems like it remains oh, the same. Don't thing. mention it. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe we we'll move along. Any more questions from the crowd? Hang on. What do we got? Yeah. Oh, we got. We got. Just some little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So maybe I'll ask the questions then. So. All right, for the Screen license. Are you ready? On your marks. Hands on the keyboard. <laughs> all right. So an easy one. What's the latest version of Angular? Number. <laughs> Come on, come on. Come on. Uh, it's two uh, key groups. Three. Uh, oh, uh, put a V what? in front as well. Uh, uh, do, you, do you want what what answer uh, James what answer you expect do you want to precise to the major version or do you want to precise to uh, uh, to minor because there is actually minor version been released recently. major fine <laughs> <Major's fine. laughs> minor they have to google which kind of is yes. <laughs> I love that Lord Teaspoon went with the final fantasy version the numbering yeah you know, you numerous for us decimal Lord Teaspoon you might have got it first <laughs> All right, I think we'll give that to Steve. So um, send me a message on me. And the other question, all right. So what's the difference between AngularJS and Angular since they're both in JavaScript? Spelling. Mm, two letters. No, that's not the answer. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Another few more. <laughs> Have you heard of Angular TS? <laughs> like TS is short for TypeScript, right? <laughs> the, the difference is. <laughs> wow, there's so many answers to choose from. I like I that. Maybe we'll have to throw this one. I didn't, one. I see to choose didn't specify which one. <laughs> uh, really? Let me just check. Come. Oh, okay. I just jumped to comments. So, which one? Angular.js. Uh, He's nearly out of long-term support. Angular.net. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe someone can remember the doc, the official uh, Steve, Angular you can't doc win it twice, by the way. Steve's trying to win two licenses. Yeah, it's only one license per month. You have to come back next month to get another one. Oh, look, Andrew's got it. Which one was which? Almost. I don't know. ASDF monkey's correct as well. <laughs> it's not precise, though. <laughs> I think we have to let Alexi decide. Yeah, I think so. so what, what are, who are the candidates? Uh, is, is anyone there who's candidate? answered the question? Anything <laughs> after about twelve. Okay. Um, can, can I, I? It's very hard to uh, to decide. Oh, yeah. Because it wasn't my question, so I only can decide if I ask the question. All right, so Andrew's All got right. a license already. He's he's happy. Yeah. Just All right. He's right. already got one. Which one was version one, and which one was version two and plus? 
just to give you more of a hint on what Swat sort of animal I was fishing for. Well, the Swatty was right as well with the component aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Swatikman. All right. So um, I love trying to say people's handles on Twitch, by the way. It's fantastic. <laughs> Even better when they're like just random letters thrown in there. <laughs> All right. So we go with component base. Yeah, we go with that. All right. So um, Swatik Man sent me a message on Meetup and uh, I'll send you through the live. Oh, sorry, send me your email address in the message on Meetup because I need to forward it as a PDF to you. That's just how it works. <laughs> <laughs> From Jeff Rain. We could post the license in chat. <laughs> the PDF? No, like the key, like, you know. But then everyone would get it. What, that one there? Oh, that one? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That'll give you access to Richard's um, business. <laughs> it so seems like give you a free one year subscription. It seems like you used license shortener, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're, we're done. We are good in terms of content. Oh, All right. So, except for anyone who wants to volunteer to talk on this marvelous uh, show, send us a message on Meetup or. Uh, we will, uh, yeah. yeah, we will probably cover some of the build announcements um, next month as well as a usual wrap up and post build follow up that we tend to do. Um, and this week tends to be conference season. There's. Um, Docker cons on as well on Friday, and I know there's a bunch of other different conferences this week. It's like everyone just goes, "Hey, end of May, let's all do stuff." Um, so we'll see if we can't do a bit of a roundup of everything else that's been going on, but um, and maybe do a couple of short talks or something like that as well. Mix it up. Exactly, Google I/O as well, and um, yeah, there's a bunch of different things. <laughs> and your father's knockout chairs. There you go. Right. <laughs> 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 I like that one. I'm doing that for sure. Are, are, we, are we expecting the Cow JS conference soon? <laughs> <laughs> Attended by two people. <laughs> <laughs> we got double the expected audience. <laughs> All, right. All right. Now that would be good. Um, and uh, as always, um, we do like <laughs> this to be engaging. So uh, ideas from yourselves, things that are value, throw it in there. Um, the other thing we were thinking of, um, and we might uh, look at, um, we were talking about it, James and I just before as well, um, possibility of potentially making this hybrid and doing in-person for those in Sydney, as well as staying on Twitch for streaming for those who want to stay remote, um, just for something a, a little different. So now that obviously restrictions of ease, at least in Australia um, yeah, and Melbourne. Melbourne. Um, yeah. In Australia, <laughs> <go>. in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Melbourne. Um, but yeah, as long as it's viable, we might try uh, doing some of that. We've got some logistics to work out, obviously, around that. But if that's interesting, just quickly do it. Yeah, we have with a mask on. Um, yeah, just send a, a um, maybe if you're on at the moment, would that be valuable? Just thumbs up or thumbs down emojis. Um, yeah. And we might ask it in Meetup as well. That's right. So there would be there would be pizza and beer as well, just like pre-COVID days, if you can imagine that. But you've got to eat the pizza with disposable tongs <laughs> so that we're not sharing the pizza and smart, you know, smearing it over each other's faces and putting our fingers in each other's food. Yeah, and you have to wash your hands after you eat the pizza. Well, and preferably before, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got your Pfizer one? I've got my uh, AstraZeneca tomorrow, so I get shot number one tomorrow. That'd be fun. Waiting, yes. And yes, that does mean I am old. Yay. <laughs> Don't tell them. They wouldn't have known otherwise. <laughs> That's a thumbs up from Steve, which is cool. All right. Yeah, me also someone uh a fingers crossed which means uh yeah okay so there's a few thumbs up which is good so we'll have a look at it um and see what we can't organize 
<laughs> or what we can organize because i know what we can't organize there's a whole lot we can't organize but yeah pizza and beer and a meetup and we can probably manage if we try hard <laughs> do you need to get a COVID vaccine first no no you just no, need to just... sign a 15 page declaration about your symptoms and I mean, the, the, the main issue is going to be just making sure wherever we're hosting is okay with people turning up yeah so we just have to work through some of those challenges logistically. So we do have to be sensible around those things. But um, if it works, it, it's great. If not, we carry on as we are anyway for a while longer and then we'll get to the point um, where it does become a bit more easy and then we go from there. In the meantime, we love you all. Um, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Very Alexi, nice. again for talking tonight. Thanks, you guys, for having me. I should me have given you a harder time. I was going to try, but I was just like, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm good mood. Yeah. One one heck of like, oh, you finally got dev tools. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, dev tools was there. Uh, it was no, no, don't uh, start. <laughs> <laughs> I did like your enthusiasm. Though. I think that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, all right, thanks, stream. We will catch you all later. Um, we'll let you know what's happening next month. And until then, ciao. Bye. Bye.